I'm going to talk about the six input mixing hot end that I've been working on since about February of this year, something like that. Up until now I've been documenting everything that I've done on my blog but uh, not many people tend to look at my blog so I thought I would carry on documenting what I do on this uh, YouTube channel instead. Which is the reason why the title of this uh, video is going to be my mixing hot end part 12. Um, parts 1 to 11 will be on my blog and I'll put a link to that down in the description so if you want to um, see what I've been up to so far in detail then take a look at the blog. By way of a recap the reason I'm trying to do it is because there aren't any mixing hot ends that you can actually buy that actually mix. They all combine filament but what comes out of the nozzle is akin to stripy toothpaste. Uh, I've spoken about this a lot and documented it on my blog so I'm not going to go over it all again now. So when I started out trying to design my own one of the things that I thought I would always struggle with would be the actual heat breaks themselves. Difficult for me to make with the equipment and stuff that I've got available. Um, and also the heat breaks need to be quite small. Um, I need six of them. The diamond hot end um, I've got three colour and I've got a five colour version but they're huge and most of it is heat breaks. So when I started out I, I looked around to see what in my view were the best heat breaks that I could buy so that I could use those off the shelf in conjunction with some other bits and bobs that I could make myself. And it was fairly, fairly obvious that the, um, the smallest ones and arguably the most efficient ones that can be purchased are uh, the ones that Slice Engineering use on their Mosquito hot ends. So I, I approached them um, cap in hand and I had a long visit video chat with um, Chris from Slice and they uh, cut a long story short they very kindly um, sent me six of those heat breaks that they use on the Mosquito and some other bits and bobs and boron nitride paste and nozzles and some other bits and bobs uh, which was very generous of them and for which I am very grateful. So my um, my earlier iterations uh, were using the Mosquito heat brakes and um, this was the last version that I had. Here's a picture of it. And this is it partially stripped down, um, just showing the, the six Mosquito heat brakes. One of the issues with a multi-input single nozzle hot end is that, the, is that you can't seal the nozzle and the heat brake in the way that you do if you just got a single hot end. So I went through various iterations and um, had various problems with leakages and so forth. Um, but I managed to fix most of those problems. Um, however, there was one issue that I was unable to uh, resolve with those heat breaks. Um, and the problem is it's, it's unique to mixing hot ends in that all the filaments are loaded all of the time, um, but only certain filaments are being used at any particular time in a print. So the filaments that aren't in use are still loaded and they're still being heated to print temperature and held at that temperature, although they're not actually moving forward. And what happens is you get heat creep through the filament itself. So it doesn't matter how efficient the heat break is in limiting heat conducting up through the metal work because the heat conducts up through the filament itself. It takes quite a while, you know, a, a good half an hour or an hour or more or something. It depends on the filament and PLA is pretty is a lot worse than PETG because it has a much lower glass transition temperature but I, I came to the conclusion that it doesn't matter how good the heat break is if you hold filament at print temperature for a long enough period of time the heat will percolate up through the filament itself. 
possibly if the filament was in very close contact with the metalwork above the heat break and that metalwork was being cooled then it might give a steep enough thermal gradient that you don't get the swelling of the filament but there has to be some clearance between the filament and the tube that it's going through so there will be an air gap so even if that tube is is actively cooled if the filament's not in contact with it then i believe that the heat is still going to creep up through the filament itself so my last um, variant shall we say was showing uh, promise in terms of it was um, looking like I was getting reasonably good mixing probably better than better than nothing anyway that which is what a diamond gives you it only combines it it doesn't mix it so I was getting better mixing than that um, but I had this blockage problem um, due to heat creep through the filament so regrettably I had to um, abandon the mosquito heat breaks and come up with another idea um, and the avenue that I'm pursuing at the moment is to use PTFE lined heat breaks which is what a diamond five color or and indeed three color use they use the E3D light heat breaks normally I would say that PTFE has no place in a, in a hot end um, these days with all metal hot ends but this is a unique situation with a mixing hot end where you've got filaments that are being held at print temperature for potentially hours at a time so I've decided to use PTFE lined heat breaks and uh, obviously I've got to make them myself and rather than um, having them air cooled with big fins which would be difficult to get six of them within any sort of reasonable proximity um, I just dis decided to um, use liquid cooling so it means I can get the heat breaks themselves closer together so this is what I've come up with effectively they're stainless steel tubes 4mm ID 6mm OD which will take PTFE liner and then I have turned down a short section to be as thin as possible to act as the heat break and then I have made a plate like I did before but the heat breaks are a press fit in the plate so I made a, I made a tool that goes inside the heat break because the heat break part of that tube is very thin in terms of wall thickness um, it would be quite easy to buckle the, the, the tube so I made a tool that goes inside it and prevents it from being crushed when the tubes are pressed into the steel into the plate the plate itself is made of stainless steel as well because I'm not sure what's going to happen in terms of when it all gets hot with thermal expansion I thought I needed to use the same material for the plate and the tube and then they'll expand and contract at the same time and hopefully the tubes will stay put I did use some high temperature um, super glue type stuff high temperature instant adhesive um, as well whether that's necessary or whether it works I don't know now these tubes had to be very precisely aligned um, they need to be truly vertical because they need to go through a water tank or rather a liquid cooling block um, which is this thing that I've made it's a chunk of aluminium um, with six holes bored in it which uh, these heat break tubes will will pass through the bore of those holes if you like is 6.2 mil so I've got 0.2 mil clearance between the heat break tubes and the holes in that block to give an idea of scale the um, 
the gap between those um, tubes, for want of a better word, is, is three mil. So then this is the lid. And then that's how the two parts go together. Um, I use some of that red instant gasket type silicon um, to seal the two bits together. And then there are two fittings, as you can see on the top, for the uh, water inlet and outlet. So the hot end itself consists of a combining block, uh, which is this thing here. So the six filament holes are at compound angles. And that's the side view of the block. Um, without divulging too much about how the mixing process actually works, the, the filament goes through a kind of a um, three-dimensional labyrinth to uh, twist it and bend it and fold it back on itself and so forth, and hopefully that will mix it at least good enough so that we don't have the stripy toothpaste effect. That's the plan. Um, the only way I can make that complicated kind of labyrinth is to use a number of plates and uh, machine slots in them and holes to interconnect the plates together. So this is what they look like. Uh, so basically I bolted the mixing chamber plates together and bolted them to the combining block and then machine the hole for the thermistor and heater and so it's accurately reamed to size. So then I fitted the, the heater and thermistor, placed it in vertically. The lowermost um, plate on the mixing chamber is, is just a block with a thread in it to take a nozzle. And so the top part of that as machines with slots so the wires for the heater and the thermistor come out the side. So what you see there is basically the uh, the mixing chamber bolted to the combining block with the heater and thermistor which are which are embedded in in vertical tubes inside it. So then this um, shows now the cooling tank so basically that slides over the six heat brakes um, <clears throat> and then it's held in place with those four um, two mil stainless steel threaded rods one in each corner so it's a pretty good fit as I say the holes in the tank are 6.2 mil diameter and the heat brake tubes are six mil so it will just about slide in then I put some uh, I'll use plenty of heat sink paste on the heat brakes on the tubes to fill in any tiny air gaps and then finally there's a, a plate at the top which is um, has Bowden clips in it so I can clip the Bowden tubes in place so the Bowden tubes will go right down they go right through the heat brake to the top of the combining block effectively but they'll stick up through this plate and connect up and onto the extruders so here's the complete assembly with the with the top plate fitted as well so you can see the six brass uh, fittings that will take the Bowden clips and the water inlet and outlet. Uh, no nozzle on it at the moment. Um, I have a big fat nozzle that I drilled out to about one mil diameter that I will fit and then when I load the filament I will flush lots of filament through with that big nozzle um, just in case there's any debris inside it that I haven't managed to clean out properly. So I've got it mounted on the machine. Um, let's go and take a look.
So there it is bolted to the carriage. Still, do, still got to connect the wires up. Still got to fit a nozzle. Right, um, there's the water tubes going up. And this kind of flexible arrangement. This is um, silicon. And then <coughs> a couple of taps so I can turn the water off if I need. And then up to the radiator. And then above that, submersible pump. And then the wiring for that goes back down there. So as you can see, it's uh, too low in relation to that strip. So I've got to modify that. So I've got a bit more work to do. So this version is um, a bit longer than the previous version, which means that the um, silicon rubbing strip I used to wipe the nozzle, I've got to lower that. And um, then I've got to change the configuration of the machine to suit the water cooling. Uh, then load some filament and, um, and then reconfigure the machine again so that I can tune the heater and then um, connect everything back up to the expansion boards. And then we'll see if it leaks or if filament comes out of the nozzle or um, whatever else might happen. I know the, I know the water tank doesn't leak, I've, uh, I've tested that separately and that's, that's sealed and that's good. Um, I guess my concerns are about the um, stainless steel heat heat breaks that are press fitted into that plate. Whether that plate will, whether they're going to seal, whether they're going to stay put when it when it's hot. But all the uh, all the plates that make up the mixing chamber, I'm fairly confident they'll be uh, they'll be okay. They're all lapped flat, and then I used a very thin layer of boron nitride paste in between them as well. Assembly wise, um, you'll have noticed that I use uh, nuts and bolts to hold everything together. And the earlier versions, I just tapped the holes in the combining block and then put long bolts and screwed them straight in. Um, when I tried to take them out, the hexagonal head in the bolts got a bit chewed up. So um, I changed it so that I use longer bolts with nuts on the outside so I can just take the nuts off and punch the bolts out if they get a bit too tight. So hopefully in two or three days I should get the rest of the bits and bobs needed done that I needed to do and then we'll see what happens. If so, um, I will either be posting another YouTube video fairly shortly. If I don't, then it means that um, I've run into some problems that I need to sort out.